Hi class, so here is the last main type of precipitation that we're going to cover, and that would be hail. And so, uh, make a couple notes to ourselves that uh, hail um, only occurs in cumulonimbus clouds. So these are kind of the cumulonimbus. These are kind of the, the granddaddy of uh, all the clouds. And uh, in particular, these will take place in mature thunderstorms. All right. Um, and so these, uh, so hail is going to form. where you have specific conditions. So where um, really intense updrafts are adjacent to downdrafts. So these uh, form in a specific part of the thunderstorm cloud. And so uh, let's go ahead and draw some uh, updrafts and downdrafts in a thunderstorm. So the, the updrafts will occur in the back portion of the cloud. Okay. And the importance of these updrafts are that they carry uh, water vapor uh, up into the cloud. The water vapor is going to be the uh, fuel for any type of storm system. Okay, so these updrafts are really important in terms of carrying water vapor up into the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, so let's make sure that uh, we label everything here. So our updrafts are in the back portion of the cloud. Um, when you get to the mature uh, portion of the thunderstorm, this cloud is going to literally have probably thousands of tons of water in it. And eventually, the weight of all of that water uh, becomes too great for the updrafts to hold. And the water starts to fall out of the cloud uh, as rain, and it's going to create the downdraft. got our downdraft. So in the mature uh, stage of thunderstorm development, here we've got the, the updrafts and the downdrafts. All right. And um, for our um, Hailstone to develop, we start off with a, um, it begins uh, as a uh, small ice pellet. So hail begins as a small ice pellet. And that small ice pellet will get caught in a downdraft. And a downdraft. And when it does that, so it's going to be carried down into the warmer part of the cloud, okay, and is uh, going to be coated with supercooled water droplets. Okay, so we've got this ice pellet that's caught up in a downdraft carried to a warmer part of the cloud, 
gets coated with super cooled water droplets uh, and then get it, it gets caught in an updraft. Then the ice pellet. Gets caught in an updraft. Gets carried to the top of the cloud. Um, I'll just say carry to uh, higher levels. And the uh, supercooled water droplets freeze. I'll just say supercooled water droplets, SCWD, are going to uh, freeze. And your ice pellet's going to then get bigger. Okay. And then the ice pellet gets caught in a downdraft and gets uh, coated with supercooled water droplets and then gets caught in an updraft and the supercooled water droplets freeze onto, we call that accretion, and then it gets caught in a downdraft. And this process just keeps going until... Well, if you think back to uh, earlier in Chapter 7, we looked at the three fates of a cloud droplet, that it could remain within the cloud, that it can fall below the cloud, uh, or it could reach uh, the Earth's surface. And uh, in this particular case, uh, and again, we were looking at the updrafts and the uh, terminal velocity of uh, the of the cloud droplets and so uh, what i'm getting at here is you know how long is this hailstone going to keep going up and down in the cloud uh, it's going to keep going until its terminal velocity becomes greater than the updraft okay so we'll make a note here to ourselves off to the side when the terminal velocity of the hailstone becomes greater than the updraft. Okay, the hail falls to the surface. Okay. So again, this, this uh, ice pellet gets caught in a downdraft, carried down into the warmer parts, gets coated with supercooled water droplets, get caught in an updraft, carried to the colder parts of the cloud where that supercooled water droplets freeze, uh, make the um, hailstone bigger, gets caught in a downdraft, gets recoated with more supercooled water droplets, get carry, gets carried by the updraft up to the colder parts of the cloud, the supercooled water droplets freeze, and you just keep growing this uh, hailstone until the terminal velocity of the hailstone becomes greater than the updraft, and at that point, the hailstone falls to the Earth's surface. So when you start hearing about baseball-sized hail or softball-sized hail, I mean, those are really extreme. Um, think of how heavy those are, and think about that in terms of the updraft. Think about how strong that updraft must have been in order to keep a baseball-sized hailstone uh, suspended within the cloud. I mean, we, we've got to be talking, you know, 50, 70, maybe even 90 mile per hour updrafts, just incredible, intense updrafts uh, when you get those really large hailstones, okay? Um, that is hail. That's the last of the precipitation uh, types that we're going to cover. But just to whet your appetite a little bit, because uh, we're going to, come back to uh, thunderstorms. Uh, there are three stages of thunderstorm development, the cumulus stage, the mature stage, and the dissipating stage. This happens to be the mature stage. So again, just to whet your appetite a little bit, uh, where the downdrafts occur, this is where you would have uh, the rain, okay, that being the front part of the thunderstorm. 
the hail, the hail would fall to the ground where the updrafts uh, and the downdrafts are adjacent to one another. And so this is where the hail would fall. We call this the hail shaft. Okay. Hail shaft occurs, again, where, and it makes sense, where the updrafts are adjacent to the downdrafts because that's where in the mature thunderstorm cloud the, the hail has been developing. Uh, and if, and this is a huge if, okay, if there is a tornado, it would be in the back portion of the cloud. Okay, it would be where the updrafts are. Okay, so your rain is going to be out, and, and this, this whole storm is moving here from uh, left to right. So the first thing you would encounter is the rain. Uh, if there was any hail, it would be... Uh, here where the uh, updrafts and the downdrafts are adjacent to one another. And the last thing you would encounter, encounter and this is a really big if, okay, if conditions are just perfect, but tornadoes are uh, pretty much the last thing to occur out of a thunderstorm cloud. And again, um, a very, very, very small percentage of thunderstorm clouds will produce tornadoes. But if they do, it would be in the back portion of the cloud. Okay, I won't cover that more when we get to uh, thunderstorms and tornadoes in chapter 11.